This program has been made by the friends and partners of Jennifer LeClaire Ministries. We hope you enjoy today's teaching. See, but here's why. Many times we leave God out of our habit making. We need to ask him, what is the one habit that if I pursue that and I implement that, it'll ripple through my life? wrapping up this series on power habits. And I want to talk to you today about the one habit that will change absolutely everything in your life. Some of y'all like, I don't believe it. It will. It will. I found the one habit that ripples through everything in my life and that makes my life better. There's one habit in your life that I do. Mine is exercise. When I exercise, I find that my day goes better. When I exercise by about 1.30, I'm very alert in the afternoon, right? Then I don't have to drink coffee, which then keeps me up at night. Then I don't sleep well, right? I mean, I was so exhausted the day I got distracted by something. How many of you know the, the enemy comes to distract, right? I think they should add that in the scripture because the Bible says in John 10.10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I think we need to add distract on there. I'm just kidding. I'm not adding to the word of God. You're tough this morning. Some of you need to get delivered. Amen. Your faces, Neil, let me just put, your faces need to get delivered. Amen. Tell your neighbor, it's going to be all right. I just sense this like gloomy, doomy thing in here today. I just break that in Jesus name. I break the powers of this hopelessness I sense in this despair that's in the atmosphere. This cannot live in a place where God dwells. God Almighty is here. Amen. He wants to teach you today. He wants to show you some things that are going to change your life. So let's get excited about the word of God. Yes. I'm about to call somebody out in a minute and just cast that devil right out of you. Would you like that? This is second service stuff. I don't normally talk about this kind of stuff in first service, but Dr. Renee, you're pulling it out of me. It's your fault. Blame him. If you don't like my message today, blame him. The one habit that'll change everything. It's exercise. For me, it's exercise. Everything goes better. I don't get foggy in the afternoon. I'm energized. I don't need to drink the coffee. I don't have to have the caffeine keeping me up all night. Everything just ripples throughout my day. That's, the, that's called a keystone habit. It's an anchor habit. It's a foundational habit. Now, if I don't exercise, I got distracted the other day. And, you know, I was like 2 o'clock, something happened, and I didn't get to exercise. by one, some, one thirty is like the magic cutoff point. I don't know why. But I didn't get to exercise. I was so exhausted. I couldn't string two thoughts together. I just couldn't pull it out. I ended up having to do errands the rest of the day just so I didn't go to sleep. I went to sleep really early that night because I was just exhausted. And then I woke up in the middle of the night because I went to bed too early. So then I was exhausted the next day and I couldn't exercise the next day. You see how it ripples? There are habits in your life that ripple. Maybe yours is an exercise. Maybe yours is, maybe it's going to bed by 10 o'clock or getting eight hours of sleep. Why? Then you wake up in the morning, you're refreshed. You have time to spend with God. Hey, you have time to make your lunch so that you don't have to spend money. Hey, on McDonald's or Toxic Bell. I mean, Taco Bell. Amen. And, 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 and see how that ripples. Now you're spending time with God. Now you're saving money. Now you're, you know, you're, you're more rested. There's a habit that will ripple through every area of your life. And when you find out what that habit is and you instill it and install it in your life, you will see rapid transformation. I mean, things that took you years and you still haven't overcome them. If you can just find that keystone habit, you'll begin to overcome in a couple of months. You've been waiting a couple of years. I'm telling you the truth. It's going to happen. Amen. God has a keystone habit. It's called love. Everything he does is motivated by love. The lens he looks through is love. His actions are inspired by love. His words are breathed through the breath of love. Amen. Aren't you glad? 
Aren't you glad? Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you today for your goodness and for your grace. Would you help us to hear the word of the Lord so that we can renew our mind to your will and your way for our life? God, we want to see change. We want to see transformation. We're tired of walking around the same old mountains every single year. We want to do it different. We want to do it your way. So teach us today, God, how to find the right habit to zero in on so that we can see the change that has eluded us in years past. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So it's called a keystone habit. So you say, what is a keystone habit? A keystone habit, it was a term that was coined by a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist named Charles Duhigg. And he wrote a book called The Power of a Habit. I've not read it, but I've heard a lot about it. People quote him all the time because he coined this. He found this based on research, based on science of watching how people operate and how habits ripple and affect our life. And he says, Keystone habits are habits that are automatically that automatically lead to multiple positive behaviors and positive effects in your life. So they ought to, if you find the right habit, it goes on autopilot. It will automatically bring all these other positive behaviors with it. It will automatically bring positive effects, positive ripples in your life. So according to Duhigg in his book, these habits are chain reactions that help other good habits take hold. There are chain reactions. It's a ripple effect. It's a ripple effect. I call it like this. It's a sequence of effects. I call it like a domino effect. When I was a kid, I had dominoes. And we would take the dominoes. Some of you maybe did this. And we would, you know, make, put them in a straight line or put them in an S. And we'd make all the, and you just tip the one domino, and it goes all the way through. Wasn't that cool? I mean, I used to like, you got to set it up just right, right? You got to set it up just right. But that's the domino effect. It goes around and it ripples through every other domino. That's what we're talking about here. That's what we need. It's a cascading effect. And so you, you can actually improve every area of your life with one keystone habit. I'm going to show you this. You're going to be convinced of it. And when you see this, it's going to set you free. Because the reason why so many of you keep failing and falling in the realm of your habits, I mean, some of you, you're already doing resolution fail. I mean, you've already just blown it for the year. You said you're going to go to the gym five times last week, and you didn't go at all. Your habits will either make or break you. You are what you repeatedly do. The chains of bad habits are too weak to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. The secret of your success is found in your daily habits. Check out our new course, Power Habits. Small shifts bring transformational results. Change your habits, change your life. Oh Jesus. You, you know you said you were going to you said you were going to start going to bed earlier? Didn't happen right? There's already been so, if we're honest, I'm not looking at anybody. There's already been some things that you said to God, give me grace to do this. Amen. And you've already blown it. You know why? Because you picked the wrong habit because you tried to change too many things at the same time. You got overwhelmed. You can't do all those things at once. You need to find the one thing that's going to make the most difference. You need to find the low-hanging fruit. You need to get some easy wins. It's called momentum. Tell your neighbor, momentum. momentum. You need momentum. You, you get momentum by going after the easy wins. And then you start feeling good about yourself. And you start saying, yeah, I can do this. This is not as hard as I thought. But the keystone habit, when you identify that, I'm telling you, it's going to whoosh through your life. And a couple of months from now, you're going to be coming back thanking me and apologizing for giving me that stank face this morning. Oh, Jesus. Sounds like a big, because some of y'all just, mm, help me, Lord. So think about, let's talk about this ripple effect. If I'd named it, keystone habits good, I'd name it the ripple habit because it ripples. Um, think about the ripple effect of sin. The wages of sin is what? So it has a ripple effect, doesn't it? 
right? But you don't see it immediately, do you? It takes a little bit of time, right? It takes a little bit of time. See, habits take about 60 to 90 days to install. You've heard 21, that's a lie from the pit of hell. That's why that's a lie from the pit of hell. And science even proves it wrong. It takes longer than 21 days to install a habit. It takes several months to install a habit. And that's why people give up because they don't think they can, they can make it even 21 days, much less 60 or 90 days, but you can. Tell your neighbor, you can do it. <laughs> think about the ripple effect of giving to God. Giving to God has a ripple effect. It's called give and it shall be. How shall it be given? Good measure. Shaken together. Pressed down. Running over. You're going to give into my bosom. Amen. Someone bring, bring me some money right now. I'm kidding. Oh, Jesus, help me in this atmosphere. Help me in this atmosphere. Think about the ripple effect of Ruth refusing to leave Naomi. Remember that? She says, I'm, wherever you go, I'm going to go. Wherever you go, I'm with you. I'm not going to leave you. Now, Orpah left. She, she dipped. She ran off, and she went back to her homeland. But Ruth said, nah, I'm here. Where you go, I go. And what happened? She got blessed. Amen. She married her Boaz, yes. And then guess who came from that family line? Jesus. Can you imagine being the lineage of Jesus? That was the ripple effect of her commitment to a woman that she barely really knew because her husband you know, died so, so, so prematurely. Then understanding the power of keystone habits, if you're going to understand it, you have to understand that all habits are not created equal. All habits are not created equal. You need to let God inspire, you need to let the Holy Ghost inspire your habits. Many times I'm convinced we leave God out of our plans. We decide we want to have a habit of whatever. Somebody call out a habit that you tried to start this year. Getting up early. Did you do it? No. <laughs> That's all right, Katie. I bless you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Somebody else, call it a habit that you, that you, what is it? Meal prepping. That's a good one. Have you done it? No. You cook. Okay, you can come to my house later. The meal prepping. See, but here's why. Many times we leave God out of our habit making. We need to ask him, what is the one habit that if I pursue that and I implement that, it'll ripple through my life? The Bible says acknowledge him in some of your ways when it's convenient for you. What? What? Did I get that wrong? The Bible says acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll direct your steps. It's the same. way. God knows what your keystone habit is, Yes. He knows. And, I, you know, it took me a long time to figure out that exercise was my keystone. It took me a long time to figure that out. When I really started looking at this, I said, man, everything in life gets, I eat better when I exercise, right? I don't eat as much. I drink more water when I exercise. You know, you're made up of 80% water. Did you know that? You, how many of y'all drink water? See, look at that. Some of y'all are like, I ain't drinking that. I'm going to drink my, my Starbucks and my Coca-Cola. Well, yeah, just coffee. So all habits are not created equal. Not all habits have that much power in your life. For example, you know, maybe you have a habit of checking Instagram when you wake up in the morning. Hmm. First thing you do, you grab your phone, you're on Instagram, or you're on email. Well, that habit is probably not going to damage your life. It's not going to do some great damage, but it's not going to help you either. So that's, you know, that's like, it's, it's somewhat neutral. Right? Some of you, maybe you get home, you watch, you know, two or three shows on Netflix every night. That's probably not going to destroy your life, but it's not helping you either. They're, they're sort of neutral, right? Not all habits are created equal. And so we need to find the power habits, which I've been talking about, that make the biggest impact. And then out of the, the five or six habits you want to start, ask the Lord, show me which one is going to make that big impact. So keystone habits drive massive change. Okay, so the keystone habit, a keystone habit brings transformation. Listen, because it does more than just change your behavior, it changes you. 
Here's the thing. We're not just trying to change our behaviors. We're trying to become who God created us to be. And we're all a work in progress, yes? The Bible says he is faithful to complete the good work he started in you. God's been working on me. Has God been working on you? Amen. Somebody say, work it, Jesus. God is working on you. He's going to keep working on you till Jesus comes back to get you. Then you'll be perfected. I can't wait. Praise God. You know, they say in heaven, you don't have to worry about gaining weight. Shabbat And you don't have to exercise either. Hey, that's good news. Amen. I won't need a keystone habit in heaven because I'll have Jesus. Praise God. So this keystone habit, we're trying to become the person God created us to be. And our habits need to reflect who God created us to be. God created you for a purpose. You have a purpose? Right. You have a purpose. There's something unique for you to do in the earth. If you were, uh, if God was finished with you, you wouldn't be here anymore. Right. God would just take you up to heaven. When you complete your purpose, when you've run your race, when you finished your course, you graduate. Until then, we are a work in progress and God is forming us and our habits need to reflect who God called us to be. So your habits may be different than my habits because your purpose is different than my purpose right? My purpose is to preach the gospel, to build a prayer movement for the end times, to travel the nations and equip people to hear the voice of God, right? My purpose is different than yours. So my purpose requires me to get up at 345 in the morning. And y'all think I have such a glamorous life and get on airplanes for 38 hours at a time. Traveling to Singapore and, you know, missing planes and getting stuck in Korea and hopping over to Japan and sitting in Dubai. And, oh, yeah, that's not glamorous, right? My, my purpose requires me to be in the, in the Word of God three or four hours a day. My purpose requires me to be in prayer one or two hours a day, right? But your purpose is different than my purpose, so your habits will be different than my habits. That's why you can't look at my life and say, oh, I want to be like that. I want to be in the Word. But that's not what you're required to do for your purpose, right? I'm not saying you can't read the Word four hours a day. I'm saying it's probably not sustainable for your lifestyle to do that. But because it's connected to my purpose, that has to be a habit. It has to be a habit. So you have to find the habits, the keystone habits that are part of God's purpose for your life. Your habits inform your self-image. They inform your self-image. Think about this. How many of y'all have bad habits? How many of y'all liars? (laughs) I just mean, because you're like, you're like, somebody actually shook their head at me. And said, no, I don't have any bad habits. Please come lay hands on me. At Jennifer LeClaire Ministries, our heart is to sow into the lives of people who may never otherwise hear the gospel of Christ or break out of bondage. Although we've traveled to dozens of nations in strategic missions, To evangelize and equip believers, there's more work to do than we can possibly get done by ourselves. That's why JLM is partnering with ministries around the world to help them do what they do best. We're partnering with ministries in India that are transforming the lives of people with leprosy. Ministries in Africa that are bringing clean water to the masses. Global ministries taking the hope of the gospel to the ends of the earth. Messiah-centered ministries in Israel that are doing the work of Christ in the Middle East. Ministries that provide a hand of hope to hurting people in America's inner cities and the nations. When you sow into JLM, you are sowing into the work of God in the nations. Together, we're better. Will you partner with us? to take the gospel to the ends of the earth, to feed hungry people, to bring hope to the addicted, and more, you can sow a seed today at jenniferleclair.org slash missions. Thank you for your partnership. in a digital era in which we can have friends all over the globe. Yet true, deep, personal connections are hard to come by in a busy world. And finding a church that offers prophetic revelation and practical keys to overcome the enemy's plans for your life can be difficult in a seeker-friendly church world. 
interahop.online, an outreach of Awakening House of Prayer. We're a global community of believers passionately pursuing God's presence. We're a prophetic church where the Holy Spirit moves. We empower you to live a supernatural breakthrough lifestyle. Get connected and make true connections in the Awakening House of Prayer global family. If you can't come to our church in Florida, come to our church online.